you've heard me talk about it for years um, about using LinkedIn Sales Navigator as the number one source for you to build prospects, prospect lists. And if you're interested in learning more about that, then in this episode, I'm going to dive in with a screen share and walk you through exactly how to do it. Gladiator in this auto war. What you think that I've been fighting for? Got a cape on like a superhero. They rushing at me like a matador. Nah, nah, I don't need your energy. I don't need the negativity. I'm just trying to bring my people up. Promise y'all I got the remedy. Straight to the roof. Tell them we bringing the troops. We got a little surprise. You thinking that we ain't the truth. We give it 120. We never make an excuse. So go run and tell everybody doubting that we coming for you. So you need to have Sales Navigator. If you got Sales Navigator, great. It's 79 bucks a month. It is the best $79 you will spend to increase your company's revenue. So once you go into the Sales Navigator, the first thing we're going to start with is you need to build a search. This is like the money maker. This is where it happens. So there's a lot of different ways to get started. If you've got strategic accounts that you're going after, you're going to want to build account lists. Um, so first step is, do you want to find companies that you're trying to go after, or do you want to find people in industries, or do you want to find people at those companies? The way that I always do everything, especially on LinkedIn, is you just go to the search and hit enter, okay? I just hit enter, and once that happens, now I'm I'm into the filtered spot. Um, and so LinkedIn has changed this a lot uh, over the last couple of years where you used to do some of these searches within LinkedIn, but then once Sales Navigator became its like own standalone platform, now the filters in within LinkedIn are kind of limited. You can't do it based on company size and stuff. It's pretty basic of geography. You can't do job function. You could do title searches and stuff, but go into it, just hit enter. There's tons of ways to get to this. Um, you could type something in, but I just go click on search, hit enter. Now we get into the filters. So this is where you want to start with. If you are like, dude, I have no idea who I want, who I'm going to go after, then I always start with the industry. So in the industry, if those of you in sales, you're used to NICS codes, SIC codes, things like that, this is not that. Okay, LinkedIn has 150 industry um, categories that they have out there, and that's it. NICS codes, SIC codes has thousands of categories, subcategories, and subcategories of subcategories. So with, with this, you want to make sure... Let me just bring it back to me real quick. What you want to make sure is that when you're building this list, like you may think that this company is this specific category, but they're not. So you might want to do a little bit of research of typing in a company name that you know is a current customer or you know is a good prospect for you. Type in their company name, go to their company page and look at what industry they're in because you may be like, dude, why are they in that industry? That's because LinkedIn only has 150 of them. So let's jump back to the screen. So going into the industry, so you guys are in, in technical sales, hopefully, if you're following this, or you're in industrial marketing, and we're going to start with some industrial stuff. So um, we're going to go with something like, let's go with electronic, electronic and electrical and electronic manufacturers, right? So we're first going to filter with that, 5 million people. The next thing you're going to want to do is geography. So let's say we're just going after United States, bumps it down from 5 million to 740,000 plus. Let's see what ends up, 740,000 plus. So there's 740,000 people plus people that are working for a company classified in this uh, industry of electrical electronic manufacturing and are in this geographic region. Put whatever you want here. I'm going to stick with the US. Now we're going to go into job function. Okay. So the job function, let's say I want to go after purchasing people. You know, a lot of you sales guys. A lot of sales guys out there, you want to go after purchasing people. Let's jump back to me real quick. Um, you got to kind of figure this out, right? If you're going after purchasing operations engineering, have that list down. You do not want to have your list. And when we get there, we're going to save this stuff. You don't want your list to just include everybody because you want to be strategic about the messaging, about the connection requests, things like that. You want to be strategic. So you need to build out lists based on some function. Maybe it's I want to go after operations, engineering, and purchasing people at this industry, and that industry is a safe search, and then you want to do a different industry, and that's a safe search. You guys can figure that out on your own. Um, the way that I like to do it is I'll bucket people into multiple industries in one search and go after specific job functions, or I'll say I want to talk to CEOs and marketing and salespeople in one specific industry. It's really one of those two things where you can do it with anything. Back to the screen. So once you get that done, now we're starting to dwindle this list down. Now we've only got 14,000 people that are in purchasing 
in this industry in the United States. And here's a perfect example, Whirlpool Corporation. You're like, Whirlpool is a uh, is an appliance company. Well, appliance is not a category on LinkedIn. So companies that are in appliance, at least Whirlpool, um, is in the category of electrical electronic manufacturing. I wouldn't have guessed that, but that's how they have it set up. So once you dig into this, now you can go even deeper. So you've got you've got purchasing selected. Now you want to go into seniority level, right? Maybe you want to go into the director of purchasing, add them to this list. We want to get this list down as strategic as possible. So now we're at 690. But then maybe you're like, you know what? I also want to deal with managers, okay? So directors and managers and maybe VPs. So now we're getting this list back up a little bit. So we're at 2,000 people. So from here, now you can say, Okay, but the companies maybe, maybe the companies that that you, you're trying to go after are different. They're different sizes. So let's go into the company headcount. Let's say we only want to, maybe you want to go after companies size 200 to 500, 201 to 500, 500 to 1,000. Select those people. Now, real quick, if you don't know the company size, if you're like, dude, I'm lost. I don't even know. Like, I'm just going to select them all. Do a little bit of research. That's what this is all about. Find companies that you currently do business with. Find companies that are already on your hit list. If you're like, I don't have a hit list, then just go after everybody in this search and then figure it out. But you want to try and say, all right, these people um, are at these companies, like reverse engineer your perfect customer profile, right? I always talk about that. Like find out what the ideal state is and reverse engineer that. And so you want to have some of that information available and then make your strategic list based on that. But if you don't have it, go after everybody. But do a little bit of due diligence. I'm sure you can find some current customers, some hot prospects that you want to go after and say, these are the people, let me look them up on LinkedIn. What's their company size? What's their industry? Where are they located? And then that creates your search criteria. Back to the screen. I'm going to keep on saying back to the screen, I guess. This is a new thing for us. Um, so company headcount. So now we're at, we're at 283 people. We got this down to 283 people. This is a pretty strategic list. Now from here, it's including relationships of everybody. First degree connections. For those that don't know, those are people that are connected with you. Second degree connections are people that are connected with the people that you're connected to. Third degree connections means they don't know you. You don't know them. You're not friends with their friends. They're not friends with your friends. So that is a super cold email or connection request. Um, so I'm going to start with, if I'm building out a list, right? If I'm building out um, people that I'm trying to go after, and let's start there. So, so the next thing on your list is going to be, am I trying to build out my network with strategic people or am I trying to market and provide value to my existing network of people? That's the first thing that you got to decide when you get down this far. You're building out this list and you can save it at this point. You can save the search and say, look, these are companies in the industry, job functions, title, seniority level, geographic location. This is who I want to mess with. These are the people I want to go after and then save that as a search. And then depending on what you're doing that week or that day or that minute, you're like, Hey, I want to send out some messages to first degree connections. Be like, Hey, check out this case study, this technical paper, this video that we just did. And especially if you guys are, are one of the MFG tribes clients, you know, we got your back with all that content, but you're like, I want to send this out to some first degree connections. All you do is go to that save search and you're going to just click on the filter of connections. So let's jump back in it. So now I want to say, like, let's say I'm trying to build out my network because that's most of you guys don't have huge networks. So we're going to want to build it out. I'm going to say second degree connections. So this is, I got 30 people that are second degree connections because guess what? I'm not connected with a whole lot of purchasing people these days. Used to, but these days I'm more sales and marketing as you guys can imagine. So when we go into this second degree connections, here's a great list. Now this is super strategic for you guys that may end up showing up like, 3000 or something like that. Um, you do not want to mess with the third degree connections yet. The whole goal is, so the whole goal here is as you add connections in your network, you're now connected with their connections. If you're going after agriculture industry, mining and metals, um, oil and gas, aerospace, whatever you're connecting with people. And you're like this, this person that this company is also connected with other people at their company on LinkedIn. And they're also connected with other people at other companies that are in the relevant space. That's how you build out your network. So you don't want to just go blindly after third degree connections. Now, if you're just starting out and you have like 14 connections or zero, um, you might have to do some third degree connections and the chances of them accepting it drop drastically 
which is why your profile being built up first and optimized is important. Um, and so you, you want to be strategic about who you're going after, but if your list is super small, you might have to back out some of those filters. So let's go back to the screen. So if I'm like, dude, 30 is not enough. I'm like, all right, I'm going to remove this seniority level. I don't care if the entry level, if they're directors, if they're managers, whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to back this out. I'm looking for second degree connections. I want to get this list a little bit bigger. Now I got 126 people. Now here's what the next step is going to be. You want to save this search, right? And we're going to want to save this search as let's say, we're going to say um, purchasing. And we're going to say, cause we're going to categorize as purchasing people, U S and just add in some of the filters, U S um, electrical, all companies, right. And we're going to save that search. Now your list is saved. Your search is saved. Now you can go back to it at any point in time under your saved searches. But next step is going to be, so now I've saved it. I've done the work. I've, I've added the filters. I've saved the search. Now I'm going to start looking at people. Now I'm going to say, if I could tell right away, Bison Gear and Engineering, I know that this dude's a good hit. There's two things I could do. I could save him, right? I could save him as a lead. I can create a new list. I can say, this is going to be, this is going to be the 2022 hit list purchasing, right? I'm going to create it and save it. So I can add this dude to the list, Jonathan. I can add Eric to it. I want to save him to that same list. Bam. Get him in there. John Shu, Ellen Nielsen. I'm going to save them to the list. So you can save them and it gives you some more information like, hey, similar leads at Digi. So you just, you're trying, you're saving Eric. He's a global sourcing manager. For those of you in sales, you know, global sourcing managers are the ones that make the final decision. But those strategic sourcing managers, those buyers, those purchasing specialists, they also have a significant influence into who gets in front of Eric's eyes. Um, hopefully Eric never sees this. Otherwise he's going to be like, dude, I'm on YouTube and stuff. Um, but they give you more, like, this is why LinkedIn's great. I've talked about this so many times. Let me jump back to me real quick. Guys, I've talked about this so many times. I'm like, you can build a prospect list so easily on LinkedIn. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is LinkedIn's recommending. They're telling you, hey, you just saved this person. Here's other people we think you might might be of interest. So yeah, I want to save all those people too, right? I'm going to jump in. I'm going to save this guy. Like you just start saving these people, save them to the list. I wish that LinkedIn had some AI that was like, hey, you know, we know what list you've been saving to. So we're going to by default put it, let us know if you don't, but it is what it is. So I'm saving these people. Um, so that's, that's one step you can do. You can save them to list to then go back to it. Or these are second degree connections. What I really want to do is I want to connect with this guy. Now there's two options here. Okay. Let me go back to me. There's two options here. All right. You can send a super custom. You got like 300 characters or something. Let me see what it says. Uh, it doesn't say it says, I think once you start typing it, you've got like 300 characters. You do not need to be like, Hey, I looked at all your stuff and I, I, um, I think that we would be a great fit for you guys based on what you're doing in this industry and blah, 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 blah. You got 300 characters. It's not going to fit. You got like four sentences. You need to keep it short and to the point. Now you can have something that you copy and paste. Like for this guy saying something like, Hey, Jonathan, we make a lot of content about your industry. I would, that I think you would get some value out of that can educate or entertain you would love to connect with you. And then dash Kyle, thanks Kyle, something like that. Or you can just leave it blank. Like people put too much weight into that connection request of being like, it has to be so specific and strategic. What ends up happening in real life is they glance at that. They look at your name and your profile picture and what does your headline say? And so going back to, I know I said I wouldn't do this, but I always break rules. Going back to your headline, this is your headline. Okay. Number one rule of optimizing a profile is do not have the default set to your name, your title and where you work. That does not mean anything unless you're like, dude, I'm, I'm the VP of whatever at John Deere. Uh, everybody knows who John Deere is obviously, but if you're at a smaller company, let's be humble a little bit. Most people don't know who your company is. Um, you want this to be relevant and talking about what it is that you do. Okay. So you want this to, to say, like mine, technical sales and marketing for industrial manufacturing companies. I put the two companies that I have in here just because some people have heard of these companies. Some people haven't. I want them to know right off the bat. We got sales university, MFG tribe. Nobody knows what they do until they look at us and they're like, oh, industrial marketing. This is where it should say things like 
solving customers problems in industrial automation uh, in these industries um, creating value by reducing minimizing waste in production efficiencies in vertical bar aerospace uh, medical device industrial communications industrial whatever it is like get creative there's tons of people that have followed the first like all the videos that i made about profile optimization tons of people have implemented those and then messaged me and been like hey what do you think is this good um anything is better than leaving it as sales manager at uh, marketing manager at um, if you're trying to build out your network, you want to talk about something that's relevant. So when that connection comes in, everybody thinks, oh yeah, they're going to read the message. They don't, they just skim it. They see it come through um, in their network. And then they say, look at the picture. Okay. Who's this person name? What is their headline? The headline only shows like the first 50, 60 characters in those connection requests. All you're trying to do is entice them to click right? You're trying to entice them to click on your profile. And then they're like, oh, this person is in my industry. They're relevant. I'm going to accept the connection request. Do not think that just because you're in sales, just because you're in marketing, you're trying to connect with people that by default, if you say you're in sales or marketing, that they're going to not accept the connection request. Now, if you break that trust and they accept the connection request and day one or day 10, you're like, hey, thanks for accepting that connection request. I got some stuff to sell you, man. They are going to not respond to you, probably remove you as a connection. And now from a quantum physics standpoint, you're putting out in the universe, dude, that like, I'm just going to hit people right away with selling them. And that's exactly what you should not do. Let's go back to the screen. You can just send the default connection request. It's going to say, Hey, I, I want to connect with you on LinkedIn or whatever, or you can copy and paste something in. So if we're saying kind of thin, um, something like would love to connect. I create a lot of content in your industry i think you would get value and entertainment out of thanks bam and so what can i do i can just go copy right i can copy and paste that or if you want to do this really fast and slick just delete that and just copy and paste it remove the first name now are there autom automation tools out there that can do this? Yes. Could you possibly get in trouble with LinkedIn for that? Yes, you can. Um, so I'm going to send, I'm going to pretend like I'm going to send this connection request. So you can send the default. Now the goal here is you've got 126 people. This is a strategic list, right? Go through it. You can say, all right, I'm just going to look at the first 10, 20 companies. Are these people good to go? Yes, yes, yes. And then I just start working my way down the list. Boom, connect. And then I send it. Boom, connect. And then I send it. And you just go down the list. And this is how you're sending out connection requests. Now, years ago, I used to, honestly, on the mobile device, this used to be faster. You can still do searches on LinkedIn, on native LinkedIn. You can filter people down. You can't do it as strategic with job function, company size, things like that. Um, but years ago when you could, I used to come home from work after I've been building out my network and sending connection requests because LinkedIn is very powerful for us. And I used to, I tell people this story all the time. I used to take my two oldest kids and be like, hey, this is, you want to make 10 bucks? And they'd be like, yeah, I want to make 10 bucks. Like, this is what I need you to do. I got this thing. It's a search on LinkedIn. I want you to scroll through. I want you to hit connect to all these people. When you get down with the list, let me know. And they'd be like, okay. Now my kids at the time were like, I only get 10 bucks for that. And then I had to go into explain the whole like, they're like, how much do people make at Chick-fil-A? And it was a whole thing. And they're like, that's not any money. But teaching them these things is important. So you can just go through and do this and just go through and start sending out these connection requests. Easy peasy. There is no excuse. You've built this list. Now from this list, once you're done with this, the easiest way to do it is, all right, I've got the save search list. I've gone through, I've sent connection requests to these people. Now I'm going to go through and I'm, I'm going to say, I want to go after same, same industry, but I want to go after engineers, right? Second degree connection to engineers, 588 people, boom, safe search is going to be engineers and so on and so forth, right? And you put whatever criteria you want up there. Then you've got this engineering list. Then you're like, okay, now you can go back in and start over and hit, hit search and clear out your filters, but this is the fastest way to do it. If you ever get back to the homepage, you just go under your save searches. You go under this save search. You're back to the save search. Now you can start adjusting things from here. Then you want to add some, some industries to it. Right. So as I go in here, 
I want to go after, let's see. I'll go after machinery guys, 4,500 people, second degree connections. I want to go after packaging containers. I'm, I'm going to build out this list huge, right? Now I got 10,000 plus people, but I want to go after everybody in that, right? I've got this filter in the company headcount, but I want to go after specific people. I want to go after operations, let's say, for you guys selling stuff into operations, 2,000 people. So 2,000 people in the United States, second degree connections in these industries within these company sizes. This is where you got to play around. You may be like, oh, 2,000 people, that's it. What if I drop this out and I, or that's too much? I want to drop this out and only go after these people. Okay, we just bumped, bumped this down to under 1,000. Then you can see if I add these, how many people does it add right here? It tells you exactly what you need to know. So you can be like, all right, I want to go, I want to add some bigger companies to it. I want to go 1,000 and 5,000. See what that comes back with. Right now we're back up to 2,500. So this is how you, the power of LinkedIn Sales Navigator to do searches strategically to build out your network. Like, dude, this is why from an advertising standpoint, like we're going to be talking about advertising on Friday from because Monday show we missed. Um, we're going to be talking about advertising. This is why advertising on LinkedIn is so powerful. You cannot go anywhere. I don't care. Facebook, Google, whatever. There is nobody that can touch the information. That is updated information. Can you find these people on Facebook? Yes. Can you search for them based on their job title and their company that they work at? No, you can't. And this is why LinkedIn's advertising is so powerful. This is why LinkedIn, LinkedIn's advertising is two to 10 times more expensive than Google because nobody can touch the data that they have. And so this is where you're building out this list. Jump back to the screen. So this is where you build out this list. You're adding company sizes. You're saying second degree connections. Now let's let's switch it. I want to talk to first degree connections, right? Not second. Let it update. There's 19 people, right? Let's say I want to remove the headcount. I just want to know everybody in this industry. We let's just say that we just made a video and it's specific to let's say the machinery industry, for example. My machinery guys are like, yeah, dude, machinery industry rocks. 135 people that are first degree connections that I have in machinery, in the operations field, right? And if I'm trying to send a piece of content, maybe I send it directly to operations. Most likely I'd be like, I just want to send it to everybody I'm connected with. Let's see what we got. We got over a thousand people. So from here, I'm going to message these guys. What's up, Tony? So Tony and I have 440 saved connections or shared connections. So from here, this is a way that that because the heat Tony is a first degree connection and so is Mike and so are all these people. So from that standpoint, um, from that standpoint, I don't have to use any in mails for those of you who don't know what in mails are. They're just credits. You get 30 of them a month or so. And that's just basically a free way to message somebody you're not connected with. I want to connect with them first to make it super free. I'm a messages person. I'm going to let's just say that I've got some copy written with some links and I'm just going to control V that in. Let's just say for argument's sake, you know, it's going to say something like, it's going to say something like, all right, let's not paste it. And let's use an actual example. Tony, we just created these two videos before that. I think you will get some value out of. Now, for those of you that are my connections on LinkedIn watching this, you've probably seen a message like this from me or from people on our team. Um, Cause we're trying to get the word out that we're just trying to provide value to these guys. Okay. These two videos below, blah, 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 hit return link one, or we're going to say like title one and then a link, whatever the link is links, title two link. Enjoy. And let's make sure I don't am. So that's a message. Now this is specific to Tony. Tony's going to be like, Oh, Kyle sent me a message specific to me. That's great. If you want to tend to spend the time and be strategic, that's what you're going to want to do. Now, if you're trying to do this at scale and you don't have an agency like MFG tribe that's doing this stuff for you, then you can leave out the first name, right? Is it a little bit impersonal? Yes. I prefer to have the first name in there before we did the, the before we were at where we're at today with the technology that we have and the way that we do things, it took a long time. And I've slowly but surely built my network from 300 people to I don't know. I got up to like six, 7,000. And once I got up to that level, then people started connecting with me and we're still building out our network every single week because we want to be connected with as many people that we could provide value to, but spend the time. Don't be like, dude, I'm so busy as a technical salesperson. Guess what? I know you're not. 
because I used to do your job and we have clients that have you as employees. You guys aren't that busy. Okay. You may seem busy. And some of you are like, no, dude, for real, I'm busy. I'm traveling all the time. Yeah. You're the exception, not the rule. Most technical salespeople, especially right now, are not super busy to where you can't spend an hour of your day doing this, right? So let's go back to the screen. So you're going to send the message. You're going to copy and paste it, change out the first name. Pretend like we just sent that. I don't want to piss Tony off, so I'm not going to send that. Then you go to the next dude, Mike. Mike. I'm not even going to say his last name because I'm going to mess it up. Boom, message. Same thing. I already sent Mike a message about Technical Sales University. President at the Kanata Company. Boom, message. Another thing about sales. Like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through these people and I'm going to message them, whatever it is. Then I'm going to go through and I'm going to save this search. So this is going to be same thing. Let's say we're going after we're going after industries this time. I forget what the industry was. Machinery guys. How can I forget machinery guys? Machinery, US. Uh, and we're going to say first degree. Boom, save that search. I want to be able to go back to this. That's the whole point is you want to be able to go back to these by saving the searches. As people respond, um, you've got a different uh, inbox. Your, your inbox in LinkedIn, and I'm not going to go to mine, um, but your inbox in LinkedIn Sales Navigator is different than your inbox in LinkedIn. Um, so your LinkedIn inbox is separate from your sales navigator inbox and they have been messing with things to try and merge the two. But because sales navigator is a different platform, you will have messages on there. You will have messages on native LinkedIn. When you send them out through sales navigator, sometimes people respond to it or message you back um, directly, not on that same thread, um, but a new message in regular LinkedIn. So you got to pay attention to both of these. Both of them have apps, right? Like you're already on LinkedIn app, download the LinkedIn sales navigator app. If you didn't know that, Dude, it's powerful to at least get your messages. You're not going to do like custom searches and crazy stuff on it um, and be super efficient at it. You can go into safe searches, but, and you can send connection requests through it, but have it at least on there from a messaging standpoint, because you're going to send out content. If somebody's like, dude, this video, this article, whatever is great. Um, can you, can, are you available at this time next week? You want to be able to respond to it quickly. So we're going to save all these searches so you can go back to them. And then again, you can go back in here and you can say, I want to like, I like these people. Let's add in some more industries, oil and energy. Like it's this simple guys. Now, some of you may be thinking like, okay, you showed me Kyle how to go after people. Now let's talk about how to go after companies. All you got, these are the lead results. These are potential lead results. Now we're going to go into our account results. So for those of you that are looking, let me jump back to me. For those of you that are looking to build out, you're like, all right, I know who to go after. I know the titles and job functions, um, I, but I don't know the companies, right? And let's say you go through this process and you're building out these people lists and you're like, yeah, but what I really want or what my boss wants or what, what upper management wants, they want a list of potential companies that we could do business with. This is the way to do it. Jump back in. We're going to just click over to account results. And I'm just staying in the same search and modifying the search. Like I said before, you can go back and wipe it all out, but why do that? So United States... Now we're going to go after other companies. Oh, there's their search list is not. We don't want any of those. Let's go back. So sometimes when this happens, you got to type in letters. Okay. If you ever experienced this where you're like, dude, I was in it and I'm going under and it's only showing me these things. LinkedIn sales navigator does this sometimes. Start typing in letters. A, I want to go after airlines. Maybe you know another A. We'll go after aviation and aerospace. Now I'm going to go into B. Like this sucks, but this is just the way it is. Biotech. I'm going to say, I know E's got some things. Electrical, electronic. I'm going to go under chemicals. Okay. I'm going to start building out this list. Now we only got 43 people in the United States that are first degree connections. Remove the first degree connections. You don't care. You're going after companies. Now I got 120,000 people. So it looks like that was the bug that was holding it up. But sometimes it's that's not the bug. It's just the way LinkedIn. So now I'm back to the full the full search A through Z, 150 companies, or 100 sorry, 150 industries. So now I got 120,000 results, right? Let's say you want to back this out and you want to go strategic over. Let's go after these electrical electronic manufacturers. Give the machinery guys a break. Forty six thousand. Okay, we got this list. You know, we got that thing cut by a third. 
So we're down to a third of it. And I'm going to say like annual revenue, this stuff isn't accurate. It's just based on whatever LinkedIn finds on Bloomberg or Zoom Info or whatever. It's not super accurate. I wouldn't go after annual revenue. I'll go after company headcount. Let's say that you know five, 501 to 1,000. Now I got 330, 366 people. You don't care about followers. You don't care about, I mean, maybe you do care about their fortune company, right? Maybe you care that they're, they're fortune 100, 101 to 250. Nobody comes back, right? So now you can start building your list. Did I? Yeah, let's delete that. Now we got back to our list. 46,000 people. Let's say that the company headcount is 200 to 500. Now you've got 1,000 companies that you got to go through. Now you could be like, dude, I want to select all these people, these 25, save it to a list, right? And save, save my own list, create a new list. And then what you have to do is you have to select that for each of the pages, but you want to try and be as strategic as possible. Maybe you're like, Hey, within a region, United States, but I want to be in Texas, right? Where I'm out of, maybe you want to say like, no, I don't want to be out of Texas. I want to be out of Chicago, my hometown, Chicago, Illinois, right? It's still got a thousand people. Oh, let's remove this. So only in Chicago, six people. Boom. Let's say I want to be like, yeah, I want to hit up Chicago, Wisconsin. I hit up the Midwest, Indiana. I hit up Michigan and Minnesota. Oh, not MN, Minnesota. So this is my territory. If you're a regional manager, regional salesperson, regional sales engineer, you're like, this is my territory. Boom. This So this is Chicago, Illinois. You can just say Illinois if you're like, Got the whole state. We all know most things happen outside of Chicago. So 164 companies. This is where you want to get strategic. Okay. You can say, I want to just throw all these guys onto a list and I'll go through them later. But from here, if you're like, hey, trip light, auto engineering, right? Like these guys, and it tells you if you already connect with somebody, it already tells them there. But I don't know if these guys are good. I'm going to hold down on a Mac. It's command on a Windows PC. It's probably control C or sorry, control. And then just click, open it up in a new tab. All right, Trip Light, they're 1 billion in revenue in Chicago. Short description on the overview, website, location, public, specialties, all that stuff is there, right? You can add a note to it if you want. Add notes to that account. You can see, posted a new photo four days ago, right? This dude started a new position at Eaton, which is Trip Light is owned by Eaton. So it gives you little account alerts. You know, you can see all account alerts for these guys. What's been going on at this company, right? What's relevant to me? Um, you can look at what who pe people also view. That's where I say, like, you go after, let me jump back to me. You go, you're going after a company and it's like LinkedIn suggesting, hey, dude, you, you see this company that you're trying to go after. Here's some other companies that other people then went to, right? Their AI is already built into it. It's like, this is common pl places that people are going to. They first look at this company. Then they also look at these other companies. Maybe they save them. Maybe they spend more time on it. But the, the algorithm behind LinkedIn is like suggesting other companies to you. So it's, it's easy to get down this rabbit hole of like, you're trying to go after one company. All of a sudden you got all these related companies and you look at those companies and those all have related companies and down the rabbit hole you go. Let's go back to it. So maybe APC by Schneider, right? I want to go to that. Click on this. Here's some more companies. Schneider Electric, Panduit, love Panduit. Used, Panduit used to be a client of mine way back in the day. Um, so that's the way you go into it. So now... We've opened this up in a new tab. You're like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to save this account. I'm going to save it to a list. I'm going to create a new list. And this is going to be, we're just going to say test list one. I don't even remember at this point what, we're, what search we're in. So they're saved to a list. Now we're going to go back to it. And maybe you're like, okay, yeah, I know these people. I know these people. I know Medtronics. I want to save all these people to a list, right? You just go, you click those people. If you're doing multiple bulk selections, click those people up here, save the list, test list one, boom, they're in there, right? Let's add some more people. Let's add, let's add all 25 of these, save them to the test list. Then you're like, all right, you know what? That's good. Well, I want to swap this out. I want to then go into a different industry and see, here we go again. I don't have my first degree connections in there, but LinkedIn's like, oh, maybe it's one of these. No, dude, it's not one of these. I got to go back through it. A, maybe I know. I'm going to go after plastics. Plastics, right? And I'm going to go after packaging. 
I just know packaging containers. That's the plastics people right there. So I'm going after these people, 218 people. I'm going to say, yep, oh, Shore Packaging, great company. Duquesne, great company. DME, love DME. Wise Plastics, love Wise. Used to compete with them all the time. Um, so I'm just going to say, like, boom, these people are in my list. Save them to the list. Right? Maybe you want to save this search. Right? Maybe you want to save the search. Account search too. Save that search. Because you want to come specifically back to it. So now this is the way you're building out accounts. You're just changing the filter criteria. Everything's updating real time. If you don't know where to go, this is showing you where to go. So that's how to do it. Now, when you're going after leads, right? You're trying to find people, go back to the lead list. You can clear all this stuff. And you can say, I want to, where is it? Am I going to struggle to find? Okay. Past lead and account activity. Search within saved accounts. All right, I'm only looking for people that are in my saved accounts, right? I just saved those accounts. I'm going to look for people that are in there. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I want to remove saved leads from the search. Maybe I want to remove viewed leads. Maybe I want to re remove people that I've contacted, right? So I'm looking at search within saved accounts. Maybe you've got a custom list, right? So here's where you get into the list that we just created. I'm going to say custom list. Test list one, boom. Now I'm in 8,500 people. Now from here, test list one, I'm going to say job function. I want engineering and I want ops people. Okay, 3,500 people, second and third degree. Then I'm going to say relationship. I'm going to say second degree. This is account-based marketing. This is account-based sales. This is getting into it strategically. 318 people. You, you can, like I said before, either save them, connect with them. If you're, if you're, after their first degree connections, you want to message them, message them. This is going to require an in-mail, one of 60 that I have, because um, he's not a first degree connection. But that's the way to do it, guys. Like, it's that simple. This is literally the key to 2022. Don't do anything else in 2022, but do this. You will have a massive amount of success. This works 100%. Guaranteed. I don't care what industry you're in, in industrial manufacturing, you will find the people that you need to find and you will connect with them. Now, from there, if you screw it up and you go in and you try and sell them on the first conversation, then this is not going to do anything good for you. But if you follow the process of fix your profile, number one, number two, build out your network, use Sales Navigator like I just showed you. Then you go into the sending valuable content. Then you go into, hey, I've sent you some valuable content. Don't say this, but you've already sent them some valuable content. Then you go into, hey, are you guys looking for a new whatever? Are you guys are you guys having any issues with this? You know, let me know if you're if you're open to 20 minutes. This is what we do. If not, no big deal. Right. And you also need to engage with them back. So go into your LinkedIn network, go through your homes, home feed, like, engage, comment, share their stuff. Like it's not just a one-sided relationship. You have to also give if you're looking to ask. So as always, guys, I appreciate your time. If you got value out of it, share it with anybody that you know. Uh, leave any comments that you have, and we will see you on the next one.